Good evening and welcome to this fourth of five Lenten midweek meditations. I am Pastor Paul Yoder, pastor of Visitation and Senior Ministry here at Asbury. If this is your first visit with us, I'm so glad you have tuned in and and hope the next 20 to 25 minutes will lead you to uh, to tuning in again next week and uh, perhaps to visit our live stream worship this Sunday morning at 9 or 10.30. 9 a.m. is a, a more traditional style worship with hymns and liturgy, while 10.30 worship is, uh, is contemporary in nature with praise music led by a, a praise band. Just use the same connection as you are using right now. Please take a, a, a moment to click on the connection card located on the, the right side of your screen and, uh, and uh, share anything about yourself that you wish to share and uh, share any comments or prayer concerns that you may have. Now, before I begin, will you please join me in prayer? Father God, thank you for this season of Lent and your call on us to set aside time each day to spend time with you in your holy word, in reflection and prayer, that we may grow in knowledge and love of you. Open our hearts and minds to the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that our minds may become more like the mind of Christ, that we might look, think, and act more like Christ every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, tonight is the 17th of March, and it was just one year ago, on March 18th, that I was not here at the church for our scheduled Lenten supper and midweek worship that evening. Both events were canceled by our governor's stay-at-home order. Instead, I spent that evening at the invitation of the Green Lake County Sheriff and the county nurse with all of the Kingston-area Amish bishops. They call their church pastors bishops. There were nine of them in an Amish schoolhouse outside of Dalton, Wisconsin. There the sheriff informed the Amish that their schools and churches were to be closed immediately and indefinitely by the same stay-at-home order. I was there as president of the board of the Care for You Clinic in Dalton. Care for You is a small cash-only nonprofit medical clinic located in the heart of the Kingston area, Amish, staffed entirely by volunteers. We also had to close the clinic, which was why I was there to inform the Amish. Our world as we then knew it certainly changed that day. Asbury also shut down all gatherings that same week. Now, after a year, this coming Sunday, we will reopen our sanctuary to worshipers. But we still will not be the same in that we will still require face masks, distancing, and hand washing. We feel our sanctuary is large enough to safely meet and still practice all safety protocols. The world was certainly stopped in its tracks a year ago because of the COVID-19 pandemic. People of most every nation, faith, and background were brought together in a way no one could have expected. It was not the kind of alien invasion any of us might have predicted. In a way, we were all united in this shared misery. Six feet of separation, wearing face masks, frequent hand washing, isolation in our homes, and far too many suffering the loss of employment as businesses were forced to close. The coronavirus pandemic also gave notice to the world that we're not in control and abruptly reminded us that we are mortal creatures. I do think that a hearty praise the Lord is in order for the swift development of effective vaccines. 
That has never happened this quickly in all of history. But this is no time to let up our praying that the many new virus mutations will be swiftly arrested by these vaccines so that we can get on with a new normal. As we move forward, we have a new normal, if you will, one in which we must remain ever vigilant and stay prepared to instantly spring into action to keep those viruses from spreading. Every Wednesday during Lent, I have prepared a meditation from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, in which Paul wrote, In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by, by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue Acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now last week in week three in this series, I spoke on the verse, At the name of Jesus every knee should bow. I said that when I think of bowing, I generally uh, think of bowing my head. Here Paul's meaning is to bend the knee, which conveys acknowledgement that the one to whom we are bending or bowing the knee, uh, that we are subservient to, to that individual to whom we are bending the knee. It is a position not to be taken lightly, for we are prideful. And this action for us is, is humiliating. When we bow the knee before another person, we are acknowledging that we are... Uh, subservient to them, and that they are superior to us. Paul says that one day all humanity should bow the knee, bend the knee, before Jesus. This evening our focus is verse 11, and every tongue should acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now that is anything but the truth today, isn't it? Paul's claim seems rather preposterous to us, and if it weren't straight from God's word, we might be among the many scoffers. Here in America, church membership keeps declining year after year after year, and the percentage of Americans who claim belief in Christ as Lord is also in steady decline. The Bible and the historic creeds of the Christian church plainly declare that Jesus Christ is truly God and truly man, united by what we call is the uh, hypostatic union. Throughout history, critics have denied this claim that Jesus is Lord, believing instead that Jesus was just a, a great teacher and nothing more. The 2020 State of Theology Survey, conducted by Ligonier Ministries, a Florida-based Reformed Church nonprofit, revealed that a majority of American adults hold this false view. 52% of Americans surveyed last year do not accept the biblical claim that Jesus is Lord. 52%. Pollster George Gallup has also documented our nation's declining belief in God in his annual Gallup polls. It causes us to question our national motto, in God we trust. Yet, here in his letter to the Philippians, Paul claims that one day every tongue should acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. By every tongue, Paul is saying every nation, every race, 
every tribe should acknowledge Jesus is Lord. Can this ever be? Until I studied this scripture for these series of messages, I suddenly realized that I had always misread Paul. I thought Paul wrote that every tongue will acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. But that's not what he wrote. Instead of will confess, he, he wrote should confess. Well, that's a mighty big cavern between will and shall or should. Our heart's desire is that no one be lost, that all are saved. But the truth is that because of our free will, many will still reject any belief that Jesus is Lord and go on to eternal separation from God and destruction. But it places on us an even greater mission to evangelize the world. It seems an impossible task, an impossible dream. Thank God we don't carry this burden alone. Christ promised us to be with us to the end. The Lord gave us the mission and is ever ready to lead and support us. We cannot fail. Think back to Matthew chapter 28 and the Great Commission. When Jesus instructed his disciples to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have command, commanded you. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Now I read that from the New Revised Standard Version. In the Gospel of Mark, we read, And Jesus said to his disciples, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Mark 16, 15. In the Gospel of Luke, not to be left out of the mix, quotes Jesus' instruction, that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Luke 24, 47. Is there any doubt this is God's will that everyone, I say again, everyone should hear the good news? Now, our skeptical nature says, yes, all may hear the good news, but we know that hearing does not equate to accepting and believing that good news. Free choice still makes it a personal decision to accept or not accept the truth of Scripture. Verse 11 says, And every tongue should acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is the New International Version translation. I learned this passage in the New Revised Standard Version translation, in which verse 11 reads, And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Confess just somehow seems a, a stronger verb than acknowledge. <laughs> I may acknowledge a lot of things, but when I confess something, it is as if my heart is really in it. I acknowledge the speed limits on the expressway is 70, but it does not mean I won't uh, drive 75 or 78. But if I confess to a 70 mile per hour speed limit, I am more likely to set the cruise at 70. In last week's meditation, our lesson was all about Jesus' name. I told you that when the angel Gabriel announced to Mary that she in nine months uh, would deliver a son by the Holy Spirit and that his name would be Jesus. Again, when Gabriel appeared much later to Joseph, her husband in a dream, he told him the child's name would be Jesus also or Yeshua, or Joshua. It literally means Jesus saves. We find those stories in Luke's gospel. It is the name Jesus that brings us together this evening, this coming Sunday in our sanctuary and online. And the name Jesus has been bringing Christians together in so many ways and places across time and space. The name Jesus, Yahweh saves, tells us both who he is and what he does. He is the Savior who is saving us from our sin 
and redeeming us from the penalty of death. Jesus' name is what we proclaim as we gather as his people today. Many of us committed the Apostles' Creed to memory, reciting it when we were confirmed as youth. A creed is a statement of belief, of faith. We recite it to claim this is where we stand. Jesus is Lord is one of the earliest creeds of the Christian faith. It confesses that Jesus, the Son of Mary, is also the Son of the Most High. It's saying that this Jesus of Nazareth is God. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the Rescuer, the Reconciler. He's the one through whom Yahweh saves his creation. For the people of the early church to confess that Jesus is Lord was a big deal because it would immediately put their lives in danger. For it went against against both the Jewish religious authorities and the Roman government. Saying Jesus is Lord isn't simply a statement of belief. It's a declaration that the believer's confidence is in Christ. Jesus is the one who saves me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. He's the one who saves you and me and the rest of humanity. And the reverse is also then true. The Roman Caesar is not my Lord and not in whom I place my trust. Further, by claiming Christ, we are not yielding to the high priest or giving allegiance to the temple authorities. They heard Jesus is Lord as a threat to their positions, their status. Throughout this season of Lent, our midweek meditations have explored this hymn of Christ from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. It praises God for his love shown to us through Christ Jesus, who gave up more than we can possibly comprehend. And God gives his grace to the world through his son, Jesus, born of Mary. Why did Christ do this? He did it because he knows that we are broken and divided. Each of us is drawn to care more for ourselves than for each other. He does it so that we broken people might be made whole and have abundant lives bearing the gifts of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Christ calls us to himself and accepts us as we are, seen in all. <laughs> Thank God he does not leave us there, but by his grace continually transforms us into his likeness. By his love and grace, we continually transform. He continually transforms us to have minds more like his, seeing the world through his eyes. We become more holy, more like Christ. We are sanctified, becoming as Christ to the world. We move on to Christian perfection, perfectly like Christ. We can say without reservation that for us, Jesus is Lord. A favorite song sung by, sung by the singing seminarians at Asbury Theological Seminary while I studied for my Master's in Divinity was titled, He Never Failed Me Yet, written by Robert Day. In my 74 years, I have had many people in whom I had placed my hope and trust fail me. I could almost count on it. But ever since I accepted Christ's call on my life to serve him, to take up my cross and follow him, I can say, along with the words of this song, he never failed me. He never failed me yet. I firmly believe he never, ever will. As God's people in Christ, you and I are called to confess with our lips our faith, to give witness to, to speak of our hope and faith, to live out that hope, that faith. 
We must never fail to confess Jesus is Lord with our lips. Connecting with the people around us in these days of social distancing and self-quarantining may be more challenging. Jesus gave up the splendor of heaven and came to earth as one of the creatures he created. He humbled himself before us. He emptied himself of all heaven. He died our death and gave us that Death is no longer the final answer to our sin. As he gave himself for us, so we must give ourselves to be as Christ to our neighbors, our friends, and even to strangers, that they too may come to know Christ as Lord and Savior and join God's mighty army of salvation to all. As Christ to the world, we can donate blood, flood the food banks with food, dollars, and our service, inundate our state and federal legislators to bring about justice for all, equal employment, education, housing, and more. Speak words of comfort to people whose lives are, are being shaken. Give them someone to talk with even if you cannot be physically present for them. Confess Jesus is Lord with our lives. While it has become more difficult for us to gather in person, that doesn't mean we can't give generously to support our neighbor. Pick up groceries and other household uh, supplies for neighbors who, who can't get out when you do your weekly shopping trip. Contribute additional financial gifts to support people who are now unemployed or losing their business or the places of employment. Support our various missions of the month with financial contributions, offering of our time and talent to help. I know that new opportunities to serve continually serve us. It's the nature of ministry that there are typically more needs than funds and volunteers to fill every need. We Christians have before us an unprecedented opportunity to confess Jesus as our hope and the hope of the world with our lips and with our lives. We do all this to the glory of God the Father, our Creator. Jesus, our Savior, has reconnected us with our Father in heaven, who is our strength and salvation. You and I have hope through him, even amid pandemic and stalled economies. As disciples who look ahead to resurrection, we know that Jesus has conquered everything that would separate us from God. And as his disciples, we can connect people with God's grace in Christ right now. The world might feel like uh, it has stopped in its tracks, or at the least, slow to a crawl. But no matter how quickly life comes and goes, the name Gabriel proclaimed to Mary is truth. Yahweh saves. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. We have one last lesson. Next week, the subject of my meditation is Philippians 2, verse 5. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Please plan now to join me at 6.30 next Wednesday. If you are like me and 6.30 doesn't work well for you, for you know that you can click on the video link at any time. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.